Hey, are you searching for a great used car, truck, van, or SUV? Head on over to Dublin Auto Sales, where the selection and value are sure to fit your budget. See Wayne Kemp, Bill Topping, Alan Fields, TJ DeRochi, or Freddie Cook today. Dublin Auto Sales, celebrating another great year in business. Now proud to be on both sides of North Jefferson Street with our new truck and SUV lot. You'll also find Dublin Auto Sales at 1705 Telfair Street in Dublin. Selection, value, and bank rate or in-house financing is available, so financing is never an issue. Dublin Auto Sales, if you're searching for a great used car, truck, van, or SUV, head on over to Dublin Auto Sales. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Stan Smith, and I'm here with head coach, uh, head football coach, and athletic director at Dublin High School, Coach Roger Holmes, and this is the Dublin Fighting Irish Coaches Show. And coach, welcome to the show. Uh, I guess to quote an old childhood story, it was a bad day at Black Rock this past Friday. Not a good night for uh, the home team, the Green and Gold. I guess it was a good night for the home team, Northeast uh, Macon. Stan, it was one of those games where, you know, I just felt like we never, ever really got going. Uh, our football team, for whatever reason, has had a real tough time on the road this year. You know, you look down the thing, we lost at Veterans on a Thursday night, uh, one touchdown game. We went to Swainsboro, lost to Swainsboro and what I think is a pretty good football team made uh, a couple of mistakes in the secondary and it cost us dearly. Uh, you know, we went to uh, Dodge County, got jumped on early, was able to get back in that game and uh, then jumped on again, I guess, when the second half started. Wasn't able to get that one and then the other night we go to Northeast and uh, came out, opening drive for us, I don't know, third play of the game, I think. Uh, Jermaine Cooley breaks a long touchdown run, and lo and behold, we have a young man uh, peel back about 12 to 14 yards behind the ball carrier. They had a lineman kind of jogging across the field, and our guy peeled back with a block uh, head in front but it's one of those things where the rules have changed. They have a thing in there now, it's talking about a defenseless player, uh, blocks way behind the ball, uh, a guy covering a punt, you know the block's there forever when you set up the punt wall and a guy peels back and you never see him coming and they, and they get blindsided. Well, that's what we did on that play and it was a good call. I saw it when it happened during the game and uh, there was no question that it was an uncalled for block, but it, it brought the points back. You know, we gave, we would have jumped on them there within three plays and, and had a score. We ended up not scoring that drive. Well, we do a good job defensively on that series, and we take the football the next series, we move it. Jermaine Cooley 
had a tremendous run, was actually hit, made contact with a defender at the line of scrimmage, kept fighting, battling. That guy kept hanging on about all he grabbed a hold of when he was trying to tackle Jermaine was the ball. He kept dragging the young man for 10 or 12 yards, and about that time, two more guys hit him, and when they did, they were able to rip the ball out, and it was a turnover, I think, on our 15 or 20-yard line. Again, missing what probably was going to be a good scoring opportunity and a chance to get off to a good start. Uh, we finally get points on the board. Uh, our quarterback made uh, on the midline option, had about a 20-something yard uh, run. Yeah. Uh, we line up to kick the extra point, and we miss the extra point. So it's 6 nothing to us. Uh, they're able to respond. They get there, they get a touchdown, and, uh, you know, line up, kick their extra point, and they go up 7-6. A little bit frustrating uh, because we had blown a couple opportunities, but we go to halftime. And, uh, you know, and then in our halftime, we made a couple of adjustments, and tried to correct a couple of things and make sure our kids knew what they were lining up in and what they were doing. And I felt like they had to kick to us to start the uh, second half, and I just felt like that if we could maintain our composure and our poise, and execute that we'd be okay and uh, we'd go through the third quarter and we throw an interception uh, which changed field position. A uh, couple of penalties mixed in and next thing you know Matt Northeast is in position they stick in another one we uh, had a defensive back get beat uh, deep on a touchdown route and uh, well, I, I take that back. I, I'm, out of, I'm out of line here. We ended up in the fourth quarter, uh, no scoring in the third. In the fourth quarter, we put together about an 85-yard drive, all on the ground, uh, pounding the football pretty good. Our kids got momentum. We go down and score. And now it's 14 to uh, 12. We line up and we go for two. And we stick the two-point conversion in, 14 to seven with about three minutes to go in the game. We kick off, our kickoff goes out of bounds. Uh, they ask us then to kick off again instead of taking the ball on the 35, and our kicker hits a tremendous kickoff down to about the seven. Their kid mishandles it. He picks it up on the two. I think we get him tackled on about the 20. And be quite frank with you, I felt pretty good there the way we played defensively that I didn't feel like they'd go 80 yards. But they did. Minutes. And for us, we'd been in one coverage predominantly most of the night, and we went to a different coverage. Uh, our free safety, for whatever reason, uh, lined up for the proper coverage, but when the ball was snapped, he went out of his position, went down into the flats where we also had a corner there playing cover two, and they run a receiver over the top, and uh, he makes the catch for a long game. They score and uh, kick their extra point, and now the game's tied with 30 seconds to go. We go to overtime, and uh, they won the toss. They, defer they elected to play defense first which most people do because it lets you know what you're going to have to do uh, when you get the ball and your opportunity. First play, uh, I think we lose a yard. Second play, we might have gained the yard back, so it's third and ten. Rodriguez Martin was able to hit Tyler Strickland with a, a touchdown pass. Kids are excited. Everybody's excited. We feel pretty good right there. We go line up to kick our extra point, and we miss the extra point. And uh, so now we're up six. They get the ball, and on third down, <clears throat> their quarterback sprints out, uh, throws the football. We pick it off, game over. Unfortunately for us, in, in a very, let's just say a judgment call, uh, they determined that we had roughed the passer on that play and it gives them an automatic first down now instead of game over with the interception. 
Uh, we get a rough in the passer penalty, and now they have it first down on the nine, I think. And the next play they score, they line up, kick their extra point, they make it, and uh, game's over. Game's over, 21 20, Northeast making. So a lot of ebb and flow. Uh, I felt like as we didn't play extremely well, I thought Macon did a tremendous job. Northeast kids played extremely well. They had uh, zero turnovers for the night. Uh, we had obviously a touchdown called back and an interception to win the game. We had a penalty on it. Uh, those two plays were huge. We didn't execute in our PAT field goal game. You know, I think that's huge. Uh, that being said, our normal holder was out of the game that night. Now, did that create a problem? I'm not saying it did, but you know, when you're kicking extra points, you're kicking field goals, all those things go together. That's a three-man team. The snapper, the holder, and the kicker have to work together, and they've got to have their rhythm and their timing. And I don't know that it was a factor, but it very well could have been. And uh, now we put ourselves in a big bind, and we'll talk about that, I'm sure, when we come back from the break and uh, talk about our region standings. We'll do that. But let's go ahead and take the break. And, ladies and gentlemen, I call your attention to the sponsors of these high school football programs because these are the businesses in this community that support these kids. And we'll be right back. In 2011, we had a really bad snowstorm and we were out of power for six days and we couldn't find a hotel to go to that would accommodate the family and the dog. We lost hundreds of dollars worth of steak and hamburgers and things like that that we had in our freezer downstairs. And once Hurricane Sandy hit in this area, it was very, very traumatic for everybody. But thanks to the Generac 20 kilowatt generator that we have, we, you know, we barely noticed it. We have heat, we have air conditioning, we have all of it. The world around us was very chaotic, but in our home, we were, felt very safe and secure. I'd be more than happy to buy, buy it again. You know, it's, it's one of the best investments I've ever made in this house. Don't ever get caught in the dark again. Call the City of Dublin Natural Gas today. 0% financing and we'll just add it to your bill. The City of Dublin Natural Gas, the smart choice. Allen's Heating and Air is your licensed Amana equipment dealer. Trust Allen's Heating and Air to install and service your heating and air conditioning unit. Allen services all brands. With the purchase of a new Amana unit, you'll get a lifetime warranty on the compressor. Allen's Heating and Air. Call Sean Clark or any of his friendly staff at Allen's Heating and Air. Amana Heating and Air Conditioners. Last and last and last. You've been saying you want it, and now's the time to get it. Pool and patio furniture, in style, with fabrics you want, comfort and durability you deserve. You'll even save on accessories and add your own personal style. Peak season and telescope casual furniture, a new category of furniture made of superior quality marine grade polymer, will not crack nor separate in any outdoor environment, and proudly made in America. Come see the full line of pool and patio furniture at Mid-State Pools and spas today and bring home a colorful poolside with the original Pauly's Island Adirondack chairs. Visit our showroom today and see the complete line of lounge chairs for your pool and see the selection of Louisiana grills. The wood pellet grill that bakes, roasts, braise, smokes, grills, sears, char grills and barbecues. Anytime's a great time for a Louisiana grill. And now's a great time to save at Mid-State Pools and Spas located on Veterans Boulevard in Dublin, Mid-State Pools and Spas, we know pools. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to diverge a minute in the middle of this show and uh, talk about something else that impacts not only high school football, but uh, all phases of, of football, and that's uh, uh, the life of a coach. We recently heard that the head coach at Georgia Southern uh, was removed, that is fired. Um, of course, those of us who follow football know that Georgia Southern has not had the greatest year, either last year or this year. And um, uh, I, I can't remember the guy's name, but 
he did not last long at Georgia Southern, which yeah. has been a perennial powerhouse in that division football. What about that scrutiny that coaches get? Coach? Well, stand number one, I think, when you decide you want to be a coach, you decide you want to be a head coach, then you know that that's going with the territory. Now, unfortunately, it is a job that, without question, is always available to second guessing. You know, if you threw a pass and it was incomplete and you're on the three yard line and everybody says he should have run the football. You know, that hindsight business is, is really good. It's, it's, it's uh, usually undefeated, the hindsight end of it. But, you know, I know how it is here. I know how it is any place I've been. I know how it is with uh, friends of mine that are in the coaching business. Usually, the, the effort, the time, the energy that the coaches – are putting into it and usually the same thing for the players is not affected by how many wins and losses you have. And to be quite frank with you, a lot of times you're working a whole lot harder when things aren't going as well as you are when things are going well. The reality of it is, like at Georgia Southern, Coach Summers comes in, uh, I was talking with a gentleman yesterday, for example, he had a commitment from two coordinators that were going to come with him. If he got the job, he got the job, and all of a sudden they decided they were going somewhere else or got pay raises, stayed put. Uh, so getting off to the right start, getting the right group in there was tough. Georgia Southern has not been a good football team the last two years, certainly by Georgia Southern standards. Uh, that being the case, they are the youngest football team in FBS. I heard that the other night when I was watching a game based on the number of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors on scholarship. Georgia Southern is the youngest football program in uh, Division I football. Uh, that's a tough thing. But, you know, on the college level, coaches are able to recruit they have an idea of what they want to do offensively and defensively, and they should be able to recruit the type of personnel that you're going to need to do what you need to do. High school is completely different. I think people would be amazed if they really knew that in the state of Georgia last year, one out of every four coaches resigned or were fired on the high school level. Now, that doesn't happen really in any other profession. And that, that was last year was the norm. There was really nothing exceptional about it. One out of every four guys that sit in a head coach's chair in football in the state of Georgia are going to be gone or one way or the other, either by their choice to go take somebody else's job or whatever. You think about the impact on not just the coaches, but the coaches' families. The coaches' families, uh, you know, my wife's a trooper, and she has to be because my, she knows that my heart and soul is poured into these guys, to this program, and, and to whatever. You know, our vacation every year is the same. You can, you can go ahead and pull the calendar out for next year and say, this is when Coach Holmes is going on vacation. That's the dead week when Georgia High School says we can't do anything with our football players. It's been that way for 26 years. And, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be that way for a few more years. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, she has to sit in the stands. She doesn't have a headset on. She's not out in front and the band's playing and it's muffling the noise. She gets to hear the criticisms and the things that are being said uh, a lot of coaches have young children and they have to sit in the stands and they deal with it. And the reality of it is you want to be somewhere where winning is important and fans are upset when you're not doing what you need to do. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, good players make good coaches. 
you know, we've always believed this and, and understand this, that we want our players to believe that without us as their coaches, they wouldn't be as good. But we also have to understand without those kids as our players, we wouldn't be as good. And it all kind of fits together. So, you know, Stan, it's, it's, a, it's a very rewarding business uh, being a coach. Uh, you do get to be a part of a lot of people's lives. You do get the opportunity to hopefully teach them some of the disciplines and the things that really are going to make them successful. Uh, you know. And we've had a lot of success here. We have. And, you know, I feel it's what we talked about in here, our coaches, a little bit Sunday. You know, I feel for Coach Summers, I feel for his family. Uh, not only is Coach Summers now without a job, probably all of his assistants are soon to be as soon as the season's over. So you're moving all of them, you're moving all of their families, and you know, you're hired to do a job and you're hired to win, and you didn't, so you know that's part of it. There's a joke in this profession, there are only two types of coaches, and that's the ones that have been fired and those that are going to get fired. So, you know, just the numbers itself makes it a tough business, but I don't think there's anybody that's in this business of coaching that uh, is not willing to take that risk to go out on the field every day and work with their kids. All right. Well, thank you, Coach. And we digress just a little bit. We'll come back shortly, and we'll talk about the upcoming region, rest of the region schedule. I'm Locke Wilford, and 0% financing is back at Dublin Nissan. Right now, the Ultima S is as low as 19429 Call, click, or come see us. Dublin Nissan, the only dealer you will ever need. Hi, I'm Anna Grace with Myers Equipment and Supply, your dealer for the complete line of Can-Am side-by-sides and ATV products. For hunting, farming, or riding the trails, Can-Am has the models you need. If you like a little sport to your ride, choose the versatile Can-Am Commander. With the best-in-class power and versatility, this side-by-side -side features the essentials that change the off-road landscape. Industry-leading performance, precision-engineered handling, and rider-focused design are all on display every time you hit the throttle. Come into Myers Equipment today and see the full line of Can-Am ATVs and side-by-sides. Can-Am, the ride says it all. What if there was a paint that had the power to awaken something old or painfully dated or something you simply thought was lost forever because it could form a strong bond regardless of age? If a paint could give any time-worn surface stunning new life, you have to wonder, is it still paint? Regal Select Exterior from Benjamin Moore, only available at independently owned paint and hardware stores. Available at Four Seasons Paint and Floor Covering. We're back. All right, Coach, we've talked about the unfortunate and unprobable loss this weekend in Macon to Northeast High School, but that doesn't mean that all is lost. Golly, there's a lot of things that can happen, Stan, and for our fans, most of them know, but number one, we have an open date this week. Yeah. Okay, so there's still two weeks left in region play throughout the, the remainder of the season. A lot of things mathematically certainly can still happen. And the way this region has been this year, there's a strong possibility that something could happen. Uh, but for us, finishing second simply means this. If Dodge County is able to beat Blackley this Friday night, that goes a long way towards helping us. Uh, but we still have to beat Washington County in two weeks. So if Dodge beats Blackley, Dublin beats Washington County, we know we still finish as a number two. And that and means a home field advantage in the first game. Yeah, we would be playing at home in the first round of the playoffs. Now, if Blackley beats Dodge, we will not finish number two. 
uh, because at that point, even, uh, you know, Dodge would have one loss, Bleckley would have one loss. So in that scenario, Bleckley would go to one, Dodge would go to two. And then we would fight it out for three or four. Three or four. Now, if Northeast Macon, I think, is able to beat uh, Washington County and East Lawrence and we lose to Waco, we can totally be out. So there are way, way, way too many scenarios. Uh, a win against Washington County, I think, based on what we've tried to look at, and it's just hard to to narrow it down because of the points and the pluses and the minuses, uh, to know exactly where we stand. Now, this time next week, after everybody else plays Friday night, now we're all back to square one and we'll be able to know exactly what's going to have to happen for us on Friday night. All is not lost. Uh, things go as we probably, I guess, the – the smart money says Dodge County should be Wind. Bleckley, but Bleckley's had an open day just like Northeast had for us. They've had two weeks to study, prepare, and come up with the best game plan they can for Dodge. Uh, that game, I believe, is in Dodge County. Uh, so we need Dodge to win. You know, and if Dodge is able to, to get out of there with a win, then it comes back to us again. Are we able to do what we need to do, and that's beat Washington County here in the Shamrock Bowl. And, you know, we'll talk about them a lot next week, but they're still the same Dodge County. I mean, uh, Washington County, they have been. They're going to line up. They're going to hit you in the mouth. They're going to play physical, uh, good speed, and all those types of things, and well coached. So regardless of what happens, we're still going to have our hands full uh, in a couple of weeks here in the Shamrock Bowl on senior night with Washington County. And we've got another event coming up that night, one that we get every year here at Dublin High School, a tradition that's gone on for many years, and that's the luck of the Irish drawing. Uh, and this year it's a little different. There is a cash prize of $5,000. That's a grand prize. Uh, the ticket or tickets this year, there are only going to be, I think, 200 tickets. 200 tickets. And they're $100 a piece. But there'll be three prizes. The grand prize is the $5,000 cash uh, award. And then a big flat screen, screen TV. color TV, flat screen TV. And then third prize uh, is a, a nice recliner, recliner, very nice recliner. So they're three very nice prizes and this support that is given by the fans goes strictly to the football team and people don't understand that the school system does not pay for everything and it takes the community getting out and supporting the kids so we urge everyone to support the look of the Irish drawing members of the touchdown club any tickets can be be purchased but all you need to do is see a member of the touchdown club they'll have them that night at the game if they're not all sold out uh, but we need to support these young men who worked hard all year and uh, hopefully after friday night not this friday night but next friday night in this shamrock bowl the following friday night uh, we'll be looking at a home playoff game so, ladies and gentlemen, we want you to join us next week, but remember, support the Fighting Irish. We're open this week, but we'll see you in two weeks on Friday night. And we'll see you right here next Wednesday. <laughs>